Hey guys, Bernard from Living to Learn here. Uh, so I've been quiet on the page lately, and it's for a number of reasons. Uh, mainly work, trying to sort out things in my life in general. So I decided with Botanicus kind of having to take a bit of a sabbatical, an early sabbatical, I decided that uh, I might make. Uh, an indoor video, just something quick that I could knock together. And I was having a conversation with Joe uh, on the phone there, probably two days ago after the camp, and I decided that in light of Paddy deciding to quit Airsoft, Paddy, uh, content creator, admin, deciding to quit Airsoft to pursue the outdoors and the outdoor living a bit more. It kind of got me thinking about the varying reasons why people get into bushcraft and what draws people to the outdoors. So I saw a video maybe last year that kind of did the rounds across the UK and the US bushcraft communities on YouTube, which would be, uh, I think it started with Z Outdoors. I could be wrong, but I think it started with Zed Outdoors, where he just talked about why he got into bushcraft and what his goals were as a woodsman. So I kind of decided that maybe it'd be interesting to put that out to the community, the, uh, the Irish community, and you know, tag a couple of guys, let them tag a couple of guys. But of course, it's, it, it would be an open thing as well. If guys wanted to make a little video and put it up on the page, they could. So, um, so that's what we're going to do, we're going to have a quick chat, see how I get into bushcraft, what brought me to the outdoors and what my goals are, what I want to get out of bushcraft and hopefully it will lead to kind of an interesting discussion emerging on the page because it's not something that's really talked about that often. A lot of people would ask me, a lot of people who don't do it particularly would ask me, you know, what makes you go out in the middle of winter and sleep under a, a nylon sheet when you could be indoors and I can never really answer it I, I, I never really have a straight answer it's just I like it so I did a little bit of thinking and uh, if you'll bear with me we'll, we'll I'll try and not keep it too awfully but if you bear with me we'll, we'll lash it out we'll have a chat and we'll see who I tag and We'll go from there. So I suppose we'll start at the beginning. So what bushcraft means to me. Uh, to me, uh, bushcraft is a catch-all term that's actually started to really lose its meaning. Uh, for me, a lot of guys who would be savage bushcrafters, like guys like Joe Robinette in, in Canada and... Uh, MCQ. MCQ keeps bushcraft in his name. But a lot of what they do it seems to anger people that it's not technically bushcraft. Bushcraft to me isn't a thing. It's just knowledge. It's not something that it's not something that it can be caught under. It's not an activity. Like if you went to an Aboriginal and asked them to light a fire for you with a a bow drill. They wouldn't call that bushcraft, they call it lighting a fire. So to me, what I do isn't bushcraft. I, I go out and I enjoy the outdoors. When I practice skills, or I learn about plants, I learn about trees, or you know, I decide to maybe make a natural shelter, or I learn to be a little bit more comfortable outdoors, that's bushcraft. It's just knowing. It's just knowing something. So, bushcraft as a term or as an activity means very little to me. Uh, why I got into it? It's kind of difficult to pinpoint. I spent a lot of time outdoors when I was younger. Mainly, uh, I fancied myself as a bit of a David Attenborough. So, I'd spend a lot of time outdoors wandering the fields next to my parents house and I'd be looking at 
rabbit holes, badger holes, foxes, tracks, squirrels, birds, generally just nature watching. I'd go out with binoculars and I'd sit beside a uh, warren for the evening and I'd see if I could see if they'd come out. At some stage, I can, I can remember having a, a crappy little Kodak camera I got for my confirmation and was out snapping like a good joke. But from there, it kind of graduated where I would stay outdoors uh, overnight in a, like in a tent and it would always be pretty damn close to the house, you know. But uh, when I got to my teenage years, it kind of became more going out to camp to drink a bag of cans with my mates. And I kind of lost, I lost a lot of interest in, lost a lot of interest in learning skills. And it really only started to uh, escalate into outdoor skills or, or bushcraft or survival or prepping or whatever the hell you want to call it. When I got to about 15 or 16, I started watching Ray Mears quite a bit. Started uh, reading Lofty Wiseman's SAS Survival Guide. And I started going out and I just it just t grabbed me. So I started going out and learning things, just random things. And it was all stuff that facilitated what I was doing already, which was just going outside. I was going outside and, and I was going out for a specific purpose. So what I was learning, was facilitating that. Uh, I mostly was mostly interested in uh, the plants, you know, making uh, cord from nettles, uh, nettle soup, blackberries. That's the easy stuff. But gradually, it started to escalate and escalate and escalate. And then when I hit oh, eighteen to twenty, I started spending a bit more time outdoors. Started camping out my own bits not a whole lot but I started camping out my own bit, uh, bits and bobs and I only really I only really got into bushcraft when I hit maybe 20 22 and I got caught up in the typical craze which is go watch a YouTube video see somebody do it uh, decide you need to buy all of their kit spend a F load of money and I hate it because if you bought kit you don't know how to use and you inevitably end up cold or tired or wet and it becomes a chore, it becomes miserable for you. So I decided then to kind of take a step back, try to learn not the typical skills, you know, you're not, I didn't learn it in a, I don't learn in a structured fashion, so I don't learn, you know, firecraft and uh, sleep systems and shelters and, you know, uh, plants, ID, all this sort of, I don't learn in a structured fashion. Or what I learned for me was just to facilitate what I was doing, just to make me more comfortable. So I started learning things like, you know, natural shelters. I was learning them more so to make an additional shelter to what I already had. Uh, plants. I was learning them more so because I was interested in nature. The edibility of them and cooking and things like this doesn't really interest me. Knives, tools, firecraft, all those things sort of came as a consequence of wanting to spend time outdoors and wanting to learn how to make it more comfortable for myself. Inevitably, I don't care whether or not I can light uh, a bow drill fire in the worst conditions possible. I don't care if my kit is perfect. I don't care if my kit is leather, if it's wool, if it's camo. I, I don't care one bit. What I do care about is when I go outdoors and I've got my kit in my back and the knowledge in my head that I know I'm going to be comfortable for the evening and that I know I'm not going to be bored because there's stuff out there that interests me because I know about it. So, why I get into it was, and simply, is just to facilitate the things that I like doing to make spending time outdoors more comfortable for me. It's particularly prolonged periods. And still the same today. Yeah, so I suppose that kind of wraps up what it is for me. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't go out to 
I don't go out of my way to learn a specific structure. I suppose actually this moves on to my goals as a woodsman. Um, I have no intention of learning. It, it all is, it's all down to your motivation behind why you're doing it, your, your, uh, your end goal. And that's generally what happens why people fall under certain categories like survivalists or bushcrafters or preppers or just general tree huggers is because their end goal, did, what they're doing is basically the same but their end goal is slightly different. So my goals as a woodsman simply are to learn what's best, what works for me. So what I mean by that is when I go out or when I watch a YouTube video on let's say shelter craft or camp craft so it could be making a tripod or, or building a lean to shelter I'll watch 20 videos and I'll read a lot of books and I won't take away the textbook way to build a, a lean to hut or the textbook way to make a tripod what I'll take away from it will be oh god a hazel grows in, in, in straight poles hazel's a good wood that's a good shelter wood or you know uh, young saplings of willow or hazel can be used to bend to make uh, arch shelters or you know use green wood for a tripod things like that I'll take tidbits away and I'll try and apply it and make it my own because that's how you remember to me like that's how I remember that's how I learn I'll go out and I've tried it I've, I've tried on several occasions to do things by the book and they don't work for me. They work for a lot of people. I've seen guys go out and make cracking shelters or benches that just blow your mind. They, it's like looking at Dave Canterbury's, a page from Dave Canterbury's book or Morris Kajansky. I can't do that. I can't emulate it perfectly. Generally what I try to do is I take the core pieces of information and apply it to myself so that when I go out I remember how to do it because I did it my my way. So my end goal from it is to become proficient in my way of doing things, the stuff that works for me. So when I spend time outdoors, I'm I'm doing it my way. I'm not doing it the way uh, Dave Canterbury or one of the guys on the page or MCQ or I'm taking the important information making it my own in the end what I what I what I would say is my apex moment where I know I'm I'm succeeding as a, wood, a woodsman is when I feel as if I can go out carrying it as little as possible which I'm, I'm on the way to I, I started out with a hundred litre pack I whittled it down to 45 with two side pouches and gradually I removed the side pouches I got down to 45, it wasn't working, so I switched to a 50 litre pack and now I'm carrying that. My goal is to carry as little as possible, as light as possible, uh, make the walk in as comfortable as possible. I have my kit that I know it well, that I trust it. Not, not a 100%. Joe always says that, and it's the truth never trust your kit 100%. Trust what you have in your head. So, I want to go out and know I'm going to be okay and know that if things do go tits up and it spills down with rain like it did at the last camp it, it was horrific weather but I knew I'd be okay because I trust and faith in the gear I had I trust and faith in the knowledge I'd, I'd accrued over the last few years to know that I, I'm not in trouble here this is okay and I could still enjoy it still have fun and I know a lot of guys out there had fun too so that's really my end goal, is just to be at the point where I can travel as light as possible and as comfortably as possible based on knowing as much as possible. Um, so I suppose that's it. It's probably a little bit waffly, probably missed a few points. Like I said, I only wanted to bang this together quick and get it, try and get a discussion going on the page. So... Uh, I, uh, 
yeah, I I, I want to take the opportunity actually while I have you to thank anybody who watched Botanicus 1 and anybody who commented and anybody who's waiting for it, it will be coming. Uh, it's just the weather's holding it up. But yeah, thanks very much for all the feedback. Um, I'm really looking forward to making the next one. I will try and make a, like a bumper edition uh, to try and compensate for the fact that it'll probably be six or seven weeks before the next one comes out. And to the guys who keep the page going just by constantly feeding it with knowledge, you guys, yeah, like, I, there's too many to name, but you guys are really, really keeping the page running more so than we do as admins. It's it's all about you guys getting involved. So continue to do that. And fair play and thanks very much. So I suppose I'd better move on to the tags. The tags of who I want to hear. And I think there'll be an interesting mix. So naturally I'm going to tag Joe, St Vincent to Joe. Uh, I wonder, I will be curious to see what his motivations are uh, for getting into bushcraft specifically and also what he wants to get out of it in the end, where, where he sees his epiphany moment. Uh, I mentioned them earlier on, so I'm going to tag and call out Paddy, Carol, to make one as well. I uh, have a guy coming from a military background who spent time outdoors doing airsoft. I don't know how much time he'd spent previously outdoors, so I'd be really interested to see what it is now that has motivated him to switch and what he hopes to get out of it, what it, really what he wants. And then finally, another admin, and uh, probably the unsung hero of the entire organization, is uh, John Bishop. Mainly, I think what would be most interesting to hear from him would be the stateside perspective. What it was that got him out. What it was that got him wanting to learn skills, outdoor skills, wilderness skills, survival skills, whatever the hell you want to call them. And also what he hopes to get out of it. And yeah, I, I think that I think I'll just leave it a tree. And those guys can call out people specifically to make videos. But also, like I said, if anybody watches this video and decides they, they have something they want to share and want to get the discussion moving. Feel free to make a wee video, it doesn't matter about the quality, it doesn't matter, it's like this is terrible, but it doesn't matter if it's on your phone, it could be on a, whatever you want. Make the video, push it out, put it in the comments of this, share it to the page, whatever you want. If you're not feeling savvy with video, you're not feeling confident to do it, that's totally fine too. I'll post this on the Facebook page, uh, there'll also be a link to the YouTube channel in it, but you can watch it either way, post it on the Facebook page. And if you want to write in the comment section below your thoughts, why you got into it, and what you want to get out of it. And hopefully we can get a little, um, nice little discussion moving. So look, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to my random evening waffle. I just wanted to, wanted to make something, wanted to get, wanted to get a video going, because... I've gone out in my head, not been able to get the page, and not been able to, not been able to contribute. So I just wanted to try and get something going. So look, once again, thanks very much for all all the contribution, all the knowledge that I'm getting, learning, and uh, peace.